check the exhaust valve. <clears throat> Go ahead and bring your magnet, your control rod linkage up so your magnets are pulled tight. And then with your fingers, and I'm pointing at it, this collar shouldn't rotate, it should feel stiff. And that means that the valve is up against its seat and is seated properly. Move the float down to the stop and pull it off. You will be able to now wiggle the stem of the control valve and the collar and it should be loose. That's what you want to see. Okay. Now that we have the pump this far apart and have checked the air and exhaust valves and the control rod linkage, I'm going to show you how easy it is to field strip it to normally would be all the cleaning that you would need to do. You remove these two hairpin clips, the two clevises in the bottom, remove the top, the bottom T weldment, you swing your control rod out of the way and through and now you can move your float. Most, uh, most maintenance cleaning, this as far as you need to go. Once you have it down this far, you want to make sure that your control rod is nice and loose, that the magnet pulls it up freely. If for some reason this axle is stiff, don't take it apart until you try to put either some WD-40 or other lubricant in, in around the moving parts. Work it back and forth by hand because you have several adjustments here that are factory set. So it's best just to try to work it free if it does get stiff. Clean up the discharge tube with brushes and Alkanox soap. Same thing with your float. The inside need can be cleaned. The outside, we actually sell a brush cleaning kit for to do this. Um, to reassemble, put your float back on. Swing your control rod through your <coughs> control rod linkage. Bring your bottom T weldment in. Make sure the bottom of your control rod goes through the bushing, <coughs> the, act, the, the uh, guide right there. Even up the bottom with the bottom of the tube and align the holes for the clevis pins and, and reinsert them. Put in the hairpins to keep the clevises from falling out. And put the pump body back onto the pump. Careful not to hit the float or any of the components and to bend it. Get it onto your O-ring. Now at this point in time, it's the, it, the easiest way to continue reassembling it, the pump is to turn it on its end Set the discharge valve on the bottom on the floor. Don't forget your ball or you'll be taking it back apart. Align your bottom check valve seat, the two holes you see, with the two holes, threaded holes, they're in the bottom teal weld. Well, well. The two longer bolts go in first. You'll feel a little countersunk in threads that you can tell that that's where the bolt has to go. You start both of them by hand. When you tighten the bolts up, tighten them up evenly, a little on one, a little on the other. This will pull the O-rings seals together. And as I said before, with the top load only pumps, this is just a blind type flange being held down with the same two bolts. And that'd be, once you tighten them up, that'd be as far as you need. That would be the end of your reassembly. With the, with the bottom load pumps, you have your screen. Put that back on. Insert the last bolt.
landfill pump, we have fitting kits for your, the tubing that you have on site. Uh, also, there's some Teflon tape also in the kit and also hose clamps. So you would put the appropriate sizes. The A engraved in the top of the pump is your air supply. E is for exhaust. If you have questions about this particular pump, the serial number is on the top of the pump. And of course here again, this is the discharge check valve. So once you install your hose barbs and attach your hoses, you're ready to install the pump.